Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll take a look at the tools that I personally and as far as I know quite a few YouTube watch reviewers use, sometimes in front and sometimes behind the camera. Of course these tools are not only useful for YouTubers but also for any watch enthusiasts out there. These tools don't cost a lot of money and as a matter of fact some are surprisingly cheap. And they are not only useful but as we'll see could potentially help you to avoid some costly mistakes. So without any further delay let's jump right in. This is another video in a series of videos that I plan to cover the tools and techniques that could be useful and helpful for watch enthusiasts. I made a few videos on a how-to subject already, including on how to bring that mirror polish shine back to your scratched watch. If you haven't seen it, I will leave a link in the description. And customary wristwatch check. Today I've got my Gany Design GMT. I've got another project in another time zone, so tracking two time zones at a time comes in really handy. Digital calipers. This is the first tool on our list. These are incredibly cheap these days. No, seriously, you can get them for about five to seven pounds on Amazon here in the UK. And I'm pretty sure that about 60% of that price is the cost of the delivery. Alternatively, of course, exactly the same calipers are available on AliExpress and they are even cheaper there. So if you are not really in a hurry, then I would recommend ordering them from AliExpress, saving a few bucks in the process. Just make sure that the shipment is free when placing an order. I use them pretty much in all of my videos and as you probably notice and it is incredibly cost-effective and useful tool. And yes, the measuring surfaces are made of plastic and hence are much less likely to scratch the watch case or crystal. These calipers can measure outside and inside diameters and distances as well as depths of cavities. It uses one flat battery which usually comes with a tool and it lasts for quite a while. It has a power saving functionality whereby it will power itself off after a while if not used. It is easy to calibrate if necessary by using the zero function button and of course we can switch the measuring units between millimeters and inches. When this can be used? Well, as I already mentioned, for watch measurements, of course. However, if you are not running your YouTube watch review channel, it is still very useful. When, for example, you need to upgrade or change or fix strap or clasp on your watch, trying to guess an exact size of end link on the bracelet or width of the strap using the school ruler or measuring tape is not always practical, let alone accurate. Okay, next on our list is UV LED torch or flashlight if you are in the USA. Prices actually vary, there are professional grade level devices and those could be quite expensive. However, once with the basic functionality that I use in my reviews, those are quite affordable. I think I've got mine on Amazon UK for around eight pounds and again, probably the largest part of the price was the cost of the delivery. Not surprisingly, turn to AliExpress and you can find exactly the same tool for about three to four dollars. Of course, these come in different shapes and sizes and as I already mentioned grades and even law enforcement personnel in some countries is equipped with this type of tools. What can it be used for? Well, of course, I use it predominantly to activate or as a quick charge solution for the watch loom. And I know that might sound a bit like cheating, however, the key here is to demo the loom in relation to some other better known watch so we can clearly see the differences between the watches on camera and this allows for a reference point and to help us to evaluate and compare the loom performance and of course draw conclusions. The one I use runs on three AAA batteries which were conveniently included. It produces ultraviolet light in 395 nanometers spectrum. The body is fully made of metal. It feels quite well made, robust and sturdy. It also comes with quite detailed instructions. Of course, this tool use is not only limited to loom activation. This is actually one heck of a versatile tool which could be quite useful around the house, starting from detecting weird bugs or creepy crawlies in places where they shouldn't be and even checking for counterfeit money as a lot of countries include some kind of watermarks in their money that are only visible under the UV lights. And another tool is, of course, our trusted Diamond Selector 2. This is another tool that looks very sophisticated. However, it is actually super affordable. Yes, the same as the other two. 
You can find this for around £8 here in UK and yes, as the other two tools, this is also available on AliExpress for around $8 to $12. The functionality is very much straightforward, but for more details there is quite helpful user manual included. After switching it on, it takes about 30 seconds to get ready. My understanding is that it is warming up the metal sensor tip. The indicator light will come on to let us know that we can now use the tool. It will produce a specific beep sound in addition to the visual indicator when measuring high level of hardness. However, as a fail-safe measure, it will also produce a different tone sound if we accidentally touch the metal surface. And it comes with a useful storage case that will protect that measuring tip. Also, it has a very handy diamond holder tray. Now, this is a very useful tool. As a matter of fact, this tool can potentially save you quite a bit of money because, for starters, as the name suggests, we can actually test real diamonds with it. And, of course, diamonds do have a variety of different properties like color and clarity, for example, which are outside of the scope of this video. And to properly evaluate diamonds, we will need a proper specialist. However, for initial test, just to establish if whatever is in front of us has at least close level of hardness to diamond, we can use this tool. And if the readings are dramatically different, we have a good enough reason to to be suspicious and might need to investigate further. The same applies to watches. A lot of times manufacturers' listings can be, should we say, ever so slightly confusing or misleading and not clear. And what is presented as a fly crystal is actually not even close to that level of hardness. So, to check for sapphire, it is sometimes easy if we can actually establish a reference point by using a watch that we know for sure has or hasn't got a sapphire crystal. And we can check how different are the readings from that known sample. And if the readings are majorly different or the same, of course, depending on what type of sample you chose, then we have a solid indicator that something is not right. Taking this even further, this is usually one of the checklist tests used to identify fakes. And if the visual inspection of the watch does not show any obvious signs, then this is usually one of the first of non-visual clues that can give out a fake watch. Not the only clue, but one of them. And of course, that is because the price of Sapphire Crystal is still quite high compared to much cheaper mineral glass. And of course, producers of fakes usually will try to cut every cost corner possible. So, here you have it. I hope you find this useful and if you do, do hit that like button and of course subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And if you want to see some more videos like this or watch reviews, well, do hit one of the links on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.